The three laws of robotics. One, a robot may not injure a human being or through an action allow a human being to come to harm. Two, a robot must obey orders given it by human beings, except where such orders would conflict with the first law. Three, a robot must protect its own existence as long as that protection does not conflict with the first or second law. Even the most casual science fiction fan knows these laws. Every movie producer treats them as fact. Real life robotics experts discuss whether they could be made fact. These three laws of robotics seem so ubiquitous that they seem as if they've always existed, like versions of the golden rule have for humans. But in fact, they were created by one writer, Isaac Asimov. Isaac Asimov is one of the most famous and prolific science fiction writers of all time, having written approximately 500 books, including not only science fiction, but also science nonfiction, mystery, theology, humor, Shakespeare, and numerous other topics. He even wrote an easy introduction to the slide rule. Hey, thanks. How do these things work anyway? This isn't even a slide rule. Who gave this to me? What is this? Back to Asimov. He also invented the subgenre of mystery science fiction. Asimov was born in Russia in 1920. He and his family moved to New York when he was about three. His family owned a small candy shop, and Isaac encountered his first pulp science fiction there. By 11, he was starting to write his own stories. His first novel was published the year he was 30. After that, there is at least one work a year, usually many more, published with his name on it through 1996. This is despite the fact that he died four years earlier in 1992. After Asimov had written several robot stories, John Campbell, the editor of Astounding Science Fiction magazine, observed that Asimov wrote his robots according to a pattern. This pattern was the set of three laws enumerated at the beginning of this video. According to Asimov, these rules also apply to any tools. Number one, a tool must be safe to use. And two, provided it is safe to use, it's got to do what you want it to do. And third, provided it is safe to use and it does what you want to, it's got to last. But while Asimov is the rule maker, what is less known about him is that he was a king of rule breaking. He played with his own laws of robotics, figuring out flaws and ambiguities and turning those into stories. For example, In a story called Runaround, appearing in the collection iRobot, a highly expensive robot is casually told to do a dangerous task. So while the second law normally overrides the third law, a robot must obey orders even over protecting its own life, here the robot's priorities become skewed. The third law, self-preservation, has a higher weight than usual, while the second law, following orders, has a lower than usual weight. The robot becomes confused and can't decide whether to put its own life at risk or disobey orders. I find this particularly intriguing because it presents a situation where the three laws create a dilemma rather than keeping the whole world running smoothly. Yet, it's the very first story where all three laws appear. The modern day science fiction fan may see the three laws of robotics in movies or on television and wonder why nobody has ever thought of how those laws could go wrong. But in reality, this has been part of the fun from the beginning. Speaking of beginnings, what better way is there to start a genre than on a dare? As Asimov relates in his autobiography, I, Asimov, the 
John Campbell had once said, incautiously, that it was impossible to write a good mystery in the science fiction mode, because the detective could always produce some technologically advanced device that would help him solve the problem. I privately thought that this was a foolish statement, because it was only necessary to set the background at the start and avoid introducing anything new in the remainder of the book. You would then have a science fiction mystery that was legitimate. In other words, strong world building would fix the problem of unbelievable technological solutions. Asimov went on to prove this by writing the novel The Caves of Steel, the first ever science fiction mystery. He also wrote a straight mystery called both The Death Dealers and A Whiff of Death, which was initially rejected by the publisher who had asked him to write it. Once it found a publisher, it didn't sell very well. But every author has low points and high points. Isaac Asimov's high point may well be that he has permanently impacted science fiction, particularly robot stories, for all future writers and fans. He added variety to robot stories and legitimacy to the public perception of science fiction as a whole. Asimov won numerous awards, including several Hugo and Nebula awards, the highest awards in science fiction. He was considered one of the big three of the genre, and he is a member of the Science Fiction and Fantasy Hall of Fame. More than 10 movies have been made based on Asimov books. Along with his own PhD in chemistry, he received 14 honorary doctorates. But even after all his accomplishments, Isaac Asimov will be remembered most of all as the father of robots and mystery science fiction. Thank <laughs> you.